In this video, we're going to take a look at the song page within Studio One Three. We can access the song page by clicking song here or create a new song. We have this dialog box where we can choose a template or also a template based on interfaces or if you have any user presets that you've created, you can choose those here. You can also name your song here and I've recently done a tutorial on the start page which covers all of this in detail so check for that if you'd like to know more information. But we're just going to go ahead and I want to put this on my desktop. So I'll select that folder and hit OK. And we're taken to the song page. And by default, this is going to be the layout here. Uh, we've got our arrange view in the center. We've got our track column here. So if I press T on the keyboard, I'll add an audio track. We can just choose which type between audio, instrument, automation, fader. Here, we can choose a count, color, format between mono and stereo for audio tracks and then OK. We now have this in our track column and we have the option to choose a normal size. We can choose medium, large. We can also hold down shift and press E to make that larger or W to shrink it down a bit. We can press F4 and then over into the left hand side we can access the inspector which is going to give us more details about what's going on with our track and any audio events or MIDI parts that we have selected. This will update to represent whatever uh, event or part that you have selected. We also have this little icon here that we can click to show our track list. And I'll F4 and go ahead and close out the inspector. To the far right, we have our browser, and within the browser, we can access our instruments, effects, loops, files, and so on. Uh, we can access the browser using our hotkeys F5. That will toggle that open and closed. F6 will show us our instruments. You can see these tabs change here. F7, our effects. F8 are loops, F9 are files, and F10 will access the pool. And I'll just F5 and close that out. If we press F2 on our keyboard, we can then access the editor. If we happen to have an audio event or a MIDI part, we can double click on that and this will open up the editor as well. I'll F2 and close that out. By pressing F3, we can access our mix console and this is where we can take care of any mixing of the levels, adding effects to our channels, and so on. I'll F3 and close that out. At the very bottom we have our transport controls. We have a CPU usage display, MIDI icon. We can double click that or click once to show a MIDI monitor which will give us more details about what's going on with MIDI uh, disk performance we can click the performance uh, once there and open up a performance monitor and we can actually click the show devices to see the activity for any VST or effect devices we have open. Then we have where the song cursor is, song position cursor is and that will update to reflect. We have our sample rate. We can click that once to open up our song setup down below, we can access our options. Then we have the standard transport controls, turning on our loop, if our loop locators are set. In our ruler, if I hold down Alt, I can set the right locator there, the left is there. I can then press the forward slash on our keyboard and turn on the loop or click the icon there. Our left and right locator information is shown there. We have a record panel for various options when we're recording our MIDI. We have our click track which we can turn on by clicking there or pressing C on our keyboard. This wrench will open up our metronome setup and we can make adjustments to our metronome here. We then have a level control for our master level. If I F3 and bring up the mix console 
we can see that as I lower the master fader, this then adjusts accordingly. If I control click, then that takes it back to Unity or 0 dB. We can change our format from stereo to mono by clicking this icon there. I'll F3 and close out the console. We can navigate in our arranger by dragging this here. And then to the right, we can expand out or zoom in rather, or zoom back out. We can also, also accomplish that by pressing E to zoom in on our keyboard or W to zoom back out. If we have any other songs open, we can click this arrow there, but as we can see, that's the only one. I actually have a project open at the moment, and we can click that down arrow to uh, access any open projects, or we can click project or song to create uh, a new one, respectively. At the very top here, we have all of our tools, and these can be accessed by the numbers on our keyboard, and not the numbers on our numeric keypad, but just above our QWERTY keyboard. So one is going to give us a smart tool, and basically this is going to allow us to have the range tool if we are in the upper area of our track. If we move down below, then we have our arrow tool. We can disable that feature by clicking here, and then now we have the arrow tool throughout. I'll go ahead and re-engage that, and we're back to as we were. By pressing 2, we access the range tool, 3, the slice tool, 4, the eraser, 5, the paint tool, 6, the mute tool, 7 is the bend tool, and 8 is our listen tool. We then have this little question mark here, which will show the information panel, so this will give us helpful tips whenever we're moving around in the song view. I'm going to press 1 and bring back the smart arrow tool. Here we have the audio bend tool, and I just did a few videos on using this. Uh, or a video on using this, so I'll actually put a little link here if you'd like more information. The strip silence panel, quantize panel, and then again we have an area for working with macros. We have a macro manager that I talked about in, on the start page, and then uh, this is another option that we have for working with macros. Here we can adjust our quantize settings, and currently I'm on 16th notes. We can just click that down arrow and make further adjustments. Uh, we can change how our grid or ruler is set up. We can change that to seconds, samples, and so on. I'll put that back to bars. Here we have snap to grid. So if we are, I'll go ahead, I just double click to create a MIDI part. So uh, snap to grid is turned on. If I change our my quantize value to quarter notes, you'll note that this snaps by quarter notes. And that's because our snap to grid is turned on. So I can click that to turn it off. We can also use in on our keyboard to turn that on and off. Next we have auto scroll. scroll. Now if I click to move the song uh, position cursor here and go ahead and start playback using the spacebar. This is going to jump and move as we're progressing throughout uh, our track. If I don't want that to happen, then I can press F to turn that off or clicking that icon there. And then now as that song position cursor moves, we're going to remain where we're working. And this is helpful if you're performing some editing, say with MIDI information, and you don't want it to move around on you. So I'll go ahead and stop playback, hit the decimal on my numeric keypad to return to the beginning, and we didn't move back because the uh, auto scroll is turned off. So once I turn that back on, now we jump back to the beginning. Here we can access our video player, and I also recently did a video on that, so there should be a link here. And coming back to the browser, if we F6, we can bring in any instrument that we'd like by clicking. Here we have the different manufacturers uh, 
or companies that we can choose from. I'll just expand out personas. I can bring in an impact, and then that's going to load up like so. Then we can close out. If we'd like to show that again, we can click this icon here, and then we have access. This is going to be the same for effects. So if I hit F7, show the effects, I can then bring on an analog delay and apply that to the impact channel. So I'll F5 and close out the browser, select this MIDI part and delete that out. And that has been an overview of the song page.